Jambo everyone, my name is Arian. I'll be your safari driver as we venture through Harambe Wildlife Reserve. There's an animal spotting guide right above you. I'll help you pinpoint the animals we might be able to see today. Usually have pretty good luck. So take the time, look at the animals, see all the ones that we might be able to see. Some of them you might know, some of them you maybe never have heard of, but no worries, that's what I'm here for. We're just gonna wait for a couple minutes. We're just waiting for the call that the next truck is almost oh, close by us for spacing purposes. Saying Harambe, which means let's go, so we can buy the warden. Now during your safari adventure, I do ask that you fully remain seated the entire time, even if my vehicle is stuck, because there are no seat bolts on the vehicle, and your safety is my first priority. If you have small children, make sure they're seated next to you or on your laps. No symbol holding, cause we're not Rafiki. <laughs> if you have any phones, cameras, feel free yes. to take pictures. But if you do drop a thing outside of the vehicle, I'm not allowed to stop and retrieve it. It'll be a really sad what? day. Do you drop a thing, just let me know. I will call it in. Hopefully it's still there, oh. but it might not look the same. Just being honest though. Do you have your phones and cameras ready? Yes. Have it on some sort of sports or action setting using your phone on the shutter speed. Always best to take a, a video because these animals are all around. Can't stop for every single one. But we've officially entered into the little eye tree forest. And if you look on the right side where the big stump is, there is an okapi. Okapis are very shy and reclusive animals. So shy and reclusive that Westerners didn't discover them until 1901. So still fairly new to the Western world. Kind of looks like a zebra because of the white stripes around the legs, but it's actually a relative of the giraffe. Both the okapi and the giraffe share a similar long purple tongue, as well as male okapis have ossicombs that giraffes have on their head. Now we are getting close to a watering hole. Let's see what we can find by the water. Definitely continue to keep a lookout for any other antelope that could be hiding by the trees or the bushes. Their natural color helps with a camouflage. It looks like I'm not seeing any of the black. Oh, they're perfect. There it is. Walking down the hill. There's a black rhinoceros on that left side. Weighs about 3,000 pounds. It can charge up to 35 miles per hour. It has no natural predators, though. Its greatest threat is from us humans. So, due to poaching on the horns, so less than 5,000 black rhinos left in the world. Now their horns are made out of keratin, which you can find in your fingernails and your hair. Nothing of significant value, still being poached. Some African cultures do believe that rhino horns have medicinal values to them, but they do not. Just see some water up ahead, which is a great sign. We're getting close to Safi River. It is still a part of the Little Aintree Forest. Home to some non crocodiles as well as some hippos. If you don't see the hippos immediately, it's just because they are submerged under the water. They can stay submerged for about eight minutes under the water. So look for any eyes or any bubbles. <laughs> Male hippopotamus go weigh around 5,500 pounds. Baby calf go weigh about 85 pounds at birth. That is huge. They'll we'll spend the majority of the day submerged under the water because they have very sensitive skin. But at night, when it's a little bit cooler for them, they will walk on land and search food. They'll travel miles and miles to find it. They'll travel at most six miles to find some food. But oh, we're going to have the pleasure of seeing a hippopotamus outside the water. It's going to be on that right side. It's kind of laying up there. A group of hippos is called a bloat bloat of hippos. It looks like on the left side on the island there's some white birds. They are called the pink back pelicans. They get the name because during the mating season their backs turn pink. Both the males and the females their backs will turn pink. They also have a wingspan around eight feet long. A group of pink back pelicans is called a pod, pod of pelicans. Well, fun fact about hippos, they are considered one of the most dangerous animals in Africa. You'd think it'd be the lions or the cheetahs, but nope, it's the hippos because they are very territorial. 
You know, you're gonna go pulley pulley, which does mean going slowly in Swahili. So you can go across the bridge and see the Nile crocodiles. You're gonna be on that left side. And make sure you pull your mates to because these are real Nile crocodiles. I average they're around 16 to 20 feet long. Some can be as long as a giraffe is tall. They also can eat up to half their body weight in a single meal. It's a little bit fit. They weigh around 500 or more pounds. When they're hot, they'll stick their mouths up and the helps pull their entire bodies down. Pitbulls can stay submerged for eight minutes out of the water. Crocodiles can stay submerged when they're inactive for two hours. We're going to leave a little ice tree for us behind, as well as the soft river okay. heading towards another part of the reserve called the Savannah. Oh the Savannah is home to the famous giraffes, elephants, lions, cheetahs, and zebras, among other animals. Now, looks like we do have a little traffic jam, so we're just going to wait right here for a moment. A different part of the ecosystem. You can see the trees are going to start to change compared to when we were in the little eye cherry forest. Now it looks like we are getting close to a tree. It's going to be on our right side. It's going to kind of look like an upside down tree. It's going to look like the roots are sticking up, but it's called a baobab tree. It can be a leafless up to nine months out of the year to conserve water. And we'll probably see a lot more of the baobab trees throughout the savannah. An important part of the savannah ecosystem as well as to the animals. Now some of the baobab trees can be over thousands of years old. No way. No way. That's a lot. Looks like we do have just a little traffic jam. Or, as I like to say, a giraffic jam. Giraffic jam. L O L. It's a funny joke. Yeah, we'll go, we're slowly heading into the savannah. Ooh, savannah. Yeah, so we are officially entering into the savannah, home of the famous animals that I mentioned. This is also the savannah that we're trying so hard to protect and save through conservation efforts. Ooh. But this area in particular is called the Serengeti Grasslands. Very important part of the savannah. Yeah. Let's see what animal activity we can find as we head down the hill. Do you see some tiny little antelopes in the distance, but we're going to get a lot closer to them. <laughs> as well as I do see some ink holy cattle all the way in the distance there. Gonna be the cattle with the very long horns. But every part of the savannah can play a part with the animals. A perfect example of that are with termite mounds. They're made out of termite saliva, mucus, dirt, and animal dung. And some could be over 30 feet tall. Elephants, as well as giraffes, do like to use them as scratching posts. When they are finally broken down after all that scratching, they'll turn into mounds. Where tiny antelope and gazelle will use them as lookout posts. Keep a lookout for any predators that are hiding in the tall grass. Keep a look up by these tall trees if you notice that not a lot of leaves are closer to the ground. It is because of giraffes. They eat for 16 hours out of the day. And they only sleep though for 30 minutes. They will do so usually standing up. We'll take five minute power naps throughout the day to total up to 30 minutes. Because they only sit down once they feel very comfortable with their surroundings. Which does make sense. It does take them some time to sit down and then get back up again. That's 16 hours of eating, 30 minutes Whoa. of sleeping. That is a life to live. Well, the reason why they do eat so much because they have four stomachs, so that makes sense. Four stomachs? That's pretty interesting. They have four stomachs. I'll see what animal activity is a little bit closer to us. Oh, uh, perfect. You look up on the left side, up on the den, there's a spot hyena largest of the hyena species. 
They have 20 forms of communication. One of them is a maniacal giggling sound. Another is an even more ghostly whooping noise. Oh, very scary to hear. Hyenas uh, are led by the females. Males have the lowest rank. So your lowest rank female is higher rank than the highest rank male. Uh-oh. The females are also a little bit larger in size. the termite mounds that I mentioned earlier, you're going to be able to see how large in scale they are, especially the one that's going to be on the left side, like I said, it can be over 30 feet tall, taller than giraffes. Yes, that termite mound on the left side is taller than a giraffe. Whoa. Giraffes on average are around 18 <laughs> to 20 feet tall. Wow. That is scary. Looks like, oh bad, we're getting closer to the tiny antelope that I saw when we were first entering into the savanna. They are going to be called spring bots. They can spring up to 6 to 8 feet in the air when they're frightened, and up to 13 feet moving forward. It's called pronking. If we were to be stationary and they were to pronk, they could land right in our laps. That's how high up they could jump. And this vehicle is pretty high up off the ground, so that's impressive. But what's even more impressive about the spring bot? They are also in the top 10 of the fastest land mammals. They can run up to speeds of 60 miles per hour. Whoa. That's pretty fast. So we don't have the best look at them right now. You can look up at the animal spotting guide and see a better look at what they'll look like. Do you have a smorish kind of coloration to them? They have a tan top coat, black middle, and a white belly. 